everyone, thank you for joining me here in the truck this morning for a little truck talk. Happy Monday to you. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving holiday with their family. Uh, just think about a few things, some things that you, that you hear uh, preachers say concerning the salvific plan of, of uh, Jesus Christ. And one of those is the sacrifice of self. Um, so how would God view this sacrifice of a, a human or to be a co-sacrifice with Jesus Christ how would he view that for example one sacrifice of the human would be their their behavior there's repenting of sins and you hear this over and over and over again that that people need to repent of their sins to be saved no you repent from the sin of unbelief to be saved and I think it's very important if you're going to use the Bible term repent is to use it in proper context of salvation okay repent again a repent is metanoia it is a Greek word means change your mind change your mind by the way God changed his mind several times in the Bible and he's a perfect and holy God so repent is simply means to change your mind. One moment I want pepperoni pizza. No, I repent. I, I think I will have, I would like to be the works, the supreme. Okay? Repenting of sins to be saved is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice of self. So you, we can't be co, a co-sacrifice with Jesus Christ. What you're saying is, is that Jesus Christ's sacrifice Sacrifice is not enough. When you when you preach, we well, better, better repent of your sins, or you better you better scrub up your flesh in order to be saved. So what you're saying is you are offering yourself up as a sacrifice. No, God provided the perfect sacrifice. John the Baptist said it well. He said, "Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world." Okay, the Lamb. There's only one Lamb, guys. That is Jesus Christ Himself. Not you being a co-sacrifice with Christ. You're, you're, our sacrifice, we, it's spoiled. It's spoiled meat, as all I like to say. God provided us the sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension on high, and the person of Jesus Christ to present back to God just your perfect sacrifice. That's what we're doing. When we are recognizing we are guilty as charged, like the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross is, you know, he's told the other guy on the cross that's, that was uh, railing against Jesus. He's, don't you fear God? Don't you, don't you realize that we deserve this punishment here? We deserve this up here on this cross. But this guy, Jesus, meaning Jesus, this man over here, had done nothing amiss. He was, he, he didn't do anything wrong. And, and he's up here with us. No. He said, he, he turned to Jesus, said, Jesus, will you remember me? When you come into your kingdom, that's all he said. That is all the, the malefactor or the thief on the cross said. He turned to Jesus. He turned to God. Okay, he turned from self to God. And Jesus said, barely, barely on this day, you will be with me in paradise. Just that simple and just that quick. And that's the same thing for us. But we, but we want to present our bodies. We want to present our own sacrifice all right, what you're what you're saying is if 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 you if we could get in the mind of God, I wish we could do that. See how he how he views us down here, is you know he tells us how he views your works are like filthy rags. Okay, that's why Paul says in Ephesians two eight nine, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves; it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works; it's not of yourself. Repenting of sins is a what you're doing is a, you're trying to be a, a co-sacrifice. It's a man-centered, self-centered gospel. Okay? What must we do to be saved? That's a great question. Is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's as the don't be in jail or ask Paul when he came out of jail. What sirs, what must I do to be saved? It's a very clear question. At that moment of time, Paul could have told him anything. But no, what did he say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And I believe in that when they were in the jail, the, the jailer knew about the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ alone for our sins. He knew all that. That's why he said, what must I do to be saved? And, and, and 
that's what exactly what it is. It is by belief and belief alone. It's by trust and trust alone. So you place your trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the ascension on high, the person and work of Jesus Christ. That is it. Repenting of sins, water baptism, and all that is a man-centered, self-centered, I call it a Luciferian gospel because it points to self. We're either going to preach a self-centered gospel or a man-centered, guys, and it's got to be, um, or a Christ-centered gospel, and it's got to be a Christ-centered gospel, flat out. There's no wavering there. There's no compromise there. It is Jesus Christ and Him alone, and there's nothing missing. By the way, there's nothing missing in this salvific plan. There's nothing, there's folks that say, well, there's something missing. No, there's nothing missing. What's missing is your, your lack of understanding how easy and simple it is to be saved and to be a child of God, okay? Simple, simple plan, difficult for Jesus. The God man, he went to the cross. It's very difficult for him. By his, we are saved by his obedience, by the way, okay? So, what must we do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, his shed blood on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, and his resurrection, his ascension on high. That is it. But anyway, I hope everybody will have a great Monday today. I hope everybody's well. Love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.